Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do box frame um, cards or box frames for putting on a wall as a decoration. Um, I've made two samples so I'll let you see. Um, the first one is this one here and um, what I've done is I've used um, pixie powders on the back, micro powders um, to create a background and I've die cut two flowers and done some foliage, put a little butterfly in the corner, but I've made the two frames. Now, you can either use this to hang on your wall or you can make a stand and let it stand or you can turn it into a card. It's up to you what you do, okay? The other one I did was this one here and I've done a different selection of flowers and greenery and I've used um, paper from a 12 by 12 paper pad. So you can, you know, it can be versatile. You can use whatever you want to do. Okay, so let's get started. So how I did my frames, I used these two dies, uh, which I purchased from AliExpress. And if I can find the store that I bought them from, I will put it down in the descriptions down below. Okay, they're great. You just cut them out. And you can trim this one shorter so it sits inside the big one and that's what I did but if you don't have these and you still want to make a, a box frame um, you can do in two different ways so I'm going to show you how to do that now so taking um, a piece of card you'll need two pieces of A4 card and what I've done is I've cut these into four inches wide and then I've taken my ruler and along the top I've marked at one inch, one and a half inch, two and a half inch, three inch and it ends on four. And I've done the same at the bottom and then what I've done with my markings at the top and the bottom, I've taken it onto a scoring board and I've married the markings top and bottom up with one of the lines on your scoring board and I've just scored down, okay? And I've just went right across where my marks are, top and bottom, scoring it from the top down to the bottom. So I've done that, okay? So my box, this one is going to be an inch wide and half an inch deep. So I need to mitre the corner here. So what I do now is I can take my ruler and if I pop it down I know it's an inch wide so if I come down by one inch and mark it and then mark it at the second score line in there like so and take it to the scoring board marry it up again on one of the, the lines and score across this is going to show me where I need to cut to do my mitre. So I'm going to cut straight in there to the mark, turn it and cut up over one of the panels, okay? And then I'm going to fold it. So fold it using the folder. Okay, like so. You may want to use a bone folder just to make sure that your lines are all nice and crisp it does make a nice finish now the smaller side which has been cut shorter than this one this is the one that you're going to stick okay so just using some glue or your favorite adhesive that's up to you what you use okay and just put your glue along the one that is shorter the edge that is shorter okay now the beauty of this is you can just fold this over in half, okay, and it just fits perfectly, okay. So what you would do is you would make four like this, four exactly the same and then they would all slot in and join together to create a square, right. So that's one way of doing it if you don't have a die but you have a ruler and a scoring board. The other way of doing it is if you have one of these boards, which I believe is a crafter's companion board, 
Um, it's got inches on one side and it's got centimetres on the other side. I'm going to use the inch one. Okay, so laying that down, I've cut these again into four inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to butt that up to the butt bar. Then if you take your tool and if you score down on one inch, one and a half inch, two inch, three inch, then that will get you to your four inch. So it's one inch, one and a half, two and a half, three, and then four, and then you would cut that and you've got all your score lines. Now, what I would do next to get the mitre edge, okay, is I would turn it over so that your score lines are showing up and lay this on the one inch mark and score across the one inch, across the half inch, and that tells you where you can actually cut this to make your mitre, okay? So you would do that four times and then attach them all together, okay? So you would fold that in like so, fold that in like so, and then the bit that has got this part here, you put the plain side and stick that inside. And as you can see, that's your mitre and it still does a beautiful, neat little job, okay? So that's what you can do. If you don't have any dies, you can still cut it. So I've used these cutters and what I've done is I've went and cut out <coughs> four of this, the big thicker size, and I've cut out four of the smaller ones. And it's the same if you're making them yourself. What you would do is you would just mark it with your ruler or mark it on that board if you wanted to have a, a narrower box frame rather than having a wider one. But I've got the wider one for the outside and the small one for the inside. So we're just going to fold these along the score lines using a bone folder to make sure that the lines are nice and crisp. Like so. <clears throat> this would be nice to give to someone as a special gift. I was actually thinking about um, anybody that's got a new baby or anything because making a nice wee baby picture would be nice. Uh, putting gran and granddad in the picture and hanging it in the wee one's room. That would be cute. Yeah. So mummy and daddy can always point to Nana and Grandad um, when they're not around to get the baby familiarised with your faces. So I thought that was a good thing. Um, and uh, I just thought that even just doing for men, you know, doing a garden scene would be nice. Um, teenagers, you could make it up with a teenager. Okay, so what you want to do, you want to make sure that your, your back piece, the long piece, is covering the shorter piece. But you don't want it to shoot over on the other side. You just want to make sure that it marries up nice and neat. Okay, just going to do this wee one now. And I use my grid for when I'm putting it together. Okay, I'm just got to go over that with my bone folder. Make a nice crisp edge. Now this one I actually trimmed off the bottom because I want it to sit inside my box. And I'll show you how to do that, okay? So I've got all my four done. Now what you need to make sure, you need to make sure that these are all going the same way, okay? Because if it's going the other way, it won't fit in, okay? So starting with this one here, I'm going to pop some glue inside um, this is the red tacky glue that you get so I'm going to pop that inside there and I'm taking the other end which has got nothing cut from it and just at a, like a triangle really I'm putting some glue because that is going to be caught when you pop that inside there like that now this is where my grid comes into play because I'm going to marry the corner up on the grid and I'm going to make sure that my boxes 
and this is sitting straight, okay? Now, just going to work my way round and attach these together. Like so. And just make sure that you put some on this corner as well because it will adhere to the inside of the shape like that. Okay. And last one for this one. I just love this colour. Uh, this is one of my favourite colours. I just like it. And that goes in there. And on this side, the last one, you need to put some glue on here. And also on this bit here. Okay. And then you just slide that inside there. And again, you go back to your grid just to make sure that it's sitting straight because it can go a little bit ski with but I found if you do it like this and you check that the corners and it's sitting nice it works every time okay so for me to get the bit that went inside yep you can measure if you want to you can take a ruler and you can measure from from there to where it's sitting inside and then you can cut your tabs but what I've done is I lay this over the top and then I cut it okay so I'm going to put this one together and that will sit in there nice and neat there is a tiny little bit of space but that's because you've got to get the other bits in okay so I'm going to pop this to the side and I'm just going to finish off gluing this one together okay Now this is a narrower one but actually it's the same height so it sits really nice inside. Okay and you can flatten it down like so to get that in there like that. Now what I've done for speed is I've already put three together. Okay so that's one, two, three and I've just got this last one to go in. Okay so just make sure that it's actually sticking. Sometimes the heat of your hands can make it stick quicker. And the same as what I did for the bigger um, square. It's going to go like that and a wee bit on there. And this one here, you're going to put on this side. So it's negatives and positives are going to go together. Okay. And that will go in there. That will go in there. Okay. So there's your... There's your little um, box. If there's any glue that seeps out, you can just um, take that away later. Okay? So like so. And I'm going to bring the bigger one back in. And then this should just slide inside there like so. Okay? And it does. Perfect. I'm going to turn it over to the back. And I'm just going to take some double-sided tape. And I'm only going to go across the corners. So across the corners on the both of the frames and that'll just give that a wee bit of anchorage and stop it from sort of moving around a bit, okay, until it dries. Right, so now I'm going to put this to the side at the moment, okay, and what I've done next is I have taken a piece of card, like so, and I took my box frame, I laid that down and I popped it right up into the corner and I took a pencil and I drew down and around and I trimmed it off, okay, because this is going to go on the back. But before I put it on the back, what I did was I ran it through an embossing folder and this is the embossing folder from Creative Expressions and it's the Brambled Rose and it's by Sue Wilson. This is one of my favourites. I absolutely love it. Um, I keep going back to this one when I want to get uh, a nice fancy embossed background. It's also a lovely one when you want to use your distress inks or your chalks or anything because it really makes this pop. But I'm just going to use it as it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my double-sided tape and I'm going to pop it all round the four 
edges on the front of the embossing because we want to see it it's going to show through our frame okay like so right and just so that the actual tape is sticking i'm just taking my uh, bone folder and i'm just gently rubbing over that so that the, the tape gets into the embossing grooves okay right. and now we can remove the tape backing off without any issues because you went over with that embossing um, bone folder it's made it that the, um, the tape is actually stuck better to the embossed card and that's just coming away easy now. Okay. Now, so I'm going to turn this over onto the back and I'm going to release the little tapes from the corners. Okay, like so. There we are. Last one. And then facing downwards, I'm then just going to stick that onto the back of my box frame. Okay. What I like about that embossing um, folder is that you can actually use it the depot way, which is lovely. So you can use it that way or that way. Okay. All right. So after I've done that, I then had a wee look at my... Um, flower dies and I pick some of them so what I'm using is this one here this one here and I'm using the fern and I think the ivy now I haven't done a dry run with this yet so I may change my mind with the the fern but I know I'm going to be using that flower okay so I cut this out um, three times and I've made the big one, so there's the big one, okay, and I've just got the small one to make because I just want to have a big one and a small one, okay. So here's the technical part. So I've got this little cheap um, brush and it's plastic and I quite like this out of all the tools that is out there for making flowers, I quite like this just to... Um, slip through my fingers and um, because the little plastic handle of the brush um, is sort of springy it really really shapes the, fr the flowers beautifully okay so what I'm wanting I'm wanting two of the medium and two of the small to make a little flower for the big one I used oh Oh, my favourite tool has just broken. Oh no. So um, I've made the big one using two of the big ones, two in the medium and two the small. So now I'm just going to make a small one. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take the little bits out because I want to put the statements in the middle. Okay. And I'm going to use my mat like so because I want to just cup up the middle of these like so okay and that just helps to bring them to life okay. like so <clears throat> and the small ones like that okay and I'm just going to use my glue so I'm starting off with the big one just put a bit of glue round about the edges and I'm just going to seat that inside offsetting the petals like that okay and then I'll take my small one do exactly the same offsetting the petals like so okay then I've got some stamens here and I've learned a wee trick uh, from another crafter is I'm taking my stamens and I'm popping them together in the middle like so ok 
okay that's one two three four that's five maybe use another one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of flower wire it's very thin and I'm just going to pop that over into the middle like so and then I take my streamers like that and this has got a hole in the middle Oops, it's not stuck so let me see a wee bit more glue on that I think so I just want to release that hole in the middle okay because I want to pop my stamens through like so and then taking the wire feed that through the middle of your flower and just gently pull okay and you can pull it to wherever you want it to be how high you want your stamens okay then I've taken a piece of red tape because I want to stick the stamens down flat on the back so it's not going to make the flower look too chunky so I just slide the wire out and I can keep that for another time put a little bit of the red liner tape on the back and then just fold over your stamens okay right like that and then when you've done that you can then just bunch up your your um, petals okay next I've went and cut my greenery and I've cut it in two different colours um, the greenery just to give a wee bit of a, a difference okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my project back in and I'm going to do what's called a dry run so I'm going to start and put my greenery in like so put my greenery put my flower put another wee bit greenery down here maybe and I've got this lovely ivy and I've done the ivy in two colours as well so popping that underneath there like so and then taking the smaller flower and seating that on there okay um, so it's a case of just having a wee play at what I normally do is I just um, die cut a bunch of things and I have them there and I do little dry runs to check to see what I like and what I don't like and then I just change it around until I get to a stage where I'm, I'm happy with that okay so I'm happy with that so now I'm going to start and stick that down so to stick it down I would always use um, pin flare glue um, and I do have a bottle here here we go pin flare glue that's what I use for sticking these things because um, they won't fall off then you see because they're a tad heavier so I'm just going to take the flowers off like so and I'm just going to pop a wee bit pin flare I don't want the things flattened so um, this is just a new bottle so it's a new tube so sometimes what happens is it gets maybe like a plug inside um, and you've got to release that plug uh, but there we are so it's coming out now just a wee bit of force and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop a wee bit of the pin flare glue gel on the back of my ferns like so just lifting it up as I said I don't want to I don't want to flatten them I want them to be quite um, move moving you know right and I'm going to take the well oh, these two are joined together which will make life a lot easier so I'll just pop the ivy in now. So just a wee bit off this on here. Just the ivy. I know some people decant it into a syringe, but um, I don't. I usually just take it from the actual. Um, there we are it's it coming out now it's because it's new just takes a wee bit uh, of force but uh, best glue around for doing this kind of job mm -hmm. and just offset that slightly 
and then picking up my flowers. I like how they're positioned, so here's hoping that I can just take a blob of Pimfair glue, pop that on the middle of the flowers, like so, and then just pop that back into where that was. Okay, there we are. Give it a wee bit of a squidge down. There you are. And then that's the completed box frame. Either you can hang it on your wall or you can put it standing up or you can put a card on the back and you can give it to somebody. Okay, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button down below and the like button. And if you have any comments you would like to um, put down the comment side, um, please keep it constructive. It is my first YouTube video, so I hope that you like it and um, I'll be back. Bye just now.